A Texas morning, pleasant, still. A gray shadow emerges from the mesquite. With better light, I see a mature, white-tailed buck just 70 yards away. And I wonder, why do I even need to drive 1,200 miles to Wyoming for antelope? Well, frankly, I just love it. Our hunt began with sunny skies, cold temps, and a blistering wind. The same wind we would end up battling all week. But on the first day, we were able to get out early, explore the land we would hunt, and locate a small herd for Art and I to stalk. Do you want to be on the right side or the left side? See him. You got me a good hit though. They were behind them in the grass. I didn't even see him. I saw the buck sitting there and then I saw the doe stand. Yeah, so the doe was here. The buck was, or it wasn't a buck actually, I think it was an older doe, was here. And then further up in the grass, kind of where the barrels are, but this way, there were two more. I didn't see him. One was that big buck that's going over the ridge. I'm waiting for them to casually go over the ridge now, and I was gonna get to yours. Yours is like over this ridge right here, but I may go after those guys. Yeah, they were in the grass. 
grass, uh, bed it down behind these two. They stopped briefly and I was gonna range them. So I was fiddling with that and I was like, oh well, okay. He's, they're decent, he's a buck. He was decent. Yeah. yeah. World record? World record. With the morning hunt behind us, AJ and I set off in search of another herd. We located some antelope off in the distance and worked to close the gap. Unfortunately, we were not able to find a good shooting position based on the environmentals and the gusting wind. I did spot a quality buck out of the herd that I wanted to shoot, and so we devised a plan that involved me crawling over the side of a pond bank just above where the herd was grazing. I crawled and scooted as silent as I could be, trying to get in a good shooting position, only to scare off a young, eager buck who sprinted and took the whole herd away with him into the sunset. I tried to reacquire and get my sights on them, but they were backlit by the sun, making it impossible. So I gathered my gear, backed out, and split the difference with the ridge from where they had disappeared, working my way quickly and also shutting off my camera so that I could get in position of just 30 yards to shoot this mature buck. I was beyond ecstatic because I had accomplished what I'd come to Wyoming to do. And this trip was twofold. It was where I wanted to shoot my first antelope buck and put some meat in the freezer to feed my family and friends. The morning of the second day proved to be pretty uneventful. The afternoon picked up when AJ and I located a herd on the north side of the ranch and moved in closer to take a look. That's it for me. Second antelope here in Wyoming. Uh, tagged out, like a 150 yard shot on this doe. Uh, my buck's already at the processor or for the Euro Mount and whatnot. But uh, yeah, pretty stoked. We came back to the ranch we hunt at, uh, which is basically just a chunk of private land that we um, you pay like an access fee to and it's it's several hundred acres runs all the way back connects with some blm land in the back and uh able to get yesterday out here last 30 minutes of light and uh popped the uh, popped the buck uh, i i stalked them on and off for about an hour several two attempts to get on shot and then the last one I, I put myself in a good position about 50 yards away and made a solid shot on him and awesome buck uh, I just had him measured 
We dropped him off 13 and a half inches uh, on his horn height, which is pretty good. Even the state biologist was like, nice buck. So, and today we were on our way back uh, from the property, or from uh, up where we take them, and um, basically got back onto the property and saw some uh, a pair of doe on the north end, and I still had a doe tag to punch. So, uh, got dropped off. Hiked in a little bit, got in a good spot, and uh, took the 140 yard shot. We had a nice, clean, smooth shot right through the lungs, it looks like. So I'm gonna clean this girl up. And uh, AJ also shot a doe just about an hour ago. He's waiting on a, a group that was headed towards where he's at right now. Um, but should be good. Awesome, 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 awesome. Super stoked. AJ did end up shooting a doe that day, but we continued our search to help him fill his buck tag. And no matter how hard we tried, the results were just bleak, and we were forced to start planning for our last day of the antelope hunt. Our third day of antelope hunting was completely devoted to helping AJ fill his tag. It was cold, windy, and the property seemed deserted. We moved back to the very back of the ranch it was adjacent to some BLM land and noticed there were several herds that were bedded down and grazing. So we worked our way back using whatever natural cover we could find in canyons, on ridges. We sludged through the mud and kept going using our maps as a good reference point to keep us on track relative to where the herds would be. And after some ups and downs, and some near scares, we were finally able to get AJ close to a herd where he could make a shot. Man, I hope he's, he's setting up for a shot. Yeah, he's on the scope now, I think. Good shot. I wonder how far the shot was. I don't know. Oh, he's sitting up again. He must be down, but not. This hurt's not very skittish. Is he looking for his buck? He must be looking for it. And just like that, it was over. That final shot rang out, signaling the end of our antelope season. AJ's first shot had wounded the antelope, slowing him down from the rest of the herd. We maintained visual and tracked him to a small gully where a last shot finished the job. The rising temperatures that afternoon forced us to work quickly. We quartered, loaded the meat into game bags, filled our packs, and began to pack out back to the front. Our trek back would let us begin to think about the days ahead chasing mule deer in a zone that we had never hunted. Little did we know that weather would push back even harder and our trip would end with a roller coaster of action and emotion. In the end, only Art would find success hunting mule deer. We nonetheless celebrated our victory and turned our mind to what would be our first meal. My mind almost always goes towards tacos. I don't know what I find so comforting about those pillowy tortillas filled with spiced meat fresh veggies, and tangy salsa. Maybe I love the flexibility or the fact that I have never met a taco I didn't like. From the Tex-Mex food trucks in Austin to the street tacos in Tijuana, they all make me happy in different ways. So, 
As you can guess, I went with grilled backstrap tacos. A little season here, a little lime juice there. Mix, wash, repeat. Easy. Then throw them all in the Traeger and you have a full meal. As I finished the tacos, I reflected on my trip. I felt happy about my success with the antelope, but a small hole burned in my heart. On the last day of the hunt, I had shot a mule deer. We tracked and tracked the buck for over two miles, but all we found was one final pool of blood and no deer in sight. I often think that ending failures lead to a larger drive towards success on the next hunt the motivation serving as a reason to push forward. And I hope that that's the case for me. Nonetheless, I reminded myself that I was successful because Wyoming is a great experience and I absolutely can't wait to go back in search of my next meal.